full scale steel chimneys. And just before the war, or just when the war started, I actually bought for a friend of mine a, a two-seat dual-controlled glider. He'd been called up, whereas I was on deferred service before I was called up. I bought it for him for 30 shillings, from him for 30 shillings. That included the towing cable and so on. It has been good 30 shillings worth, because I've repaired odd fences with the cable. <laughs> <laughs> but you needed three or four friends to put the wings on and so on. It was, you know, the size of the thing didn't appeal at all. But in, uh, between 1956 and 58, I was in America, and there there were plans being sold of a gyro glider, do-it-yourself gyro glider. They were actually based on something that had been shipped over there during the war, and a man had made a sort of simple version of it and do it yourself. I bought the plans and I said, when I get back home, I'm going to make mine with a conventional control column instead of one that hung down and worked like an umbrella, and I'm going to have an engine on it because I'd already got some engines that would be suitable for the job. And uh, when I came back, I was extremely lucky here, uh, it's just worth mentioning, because the aftermath of the the uh, flying flea was still extant, you see. But I realised that, uh, although I was flying in the RAF and so on, that I needed a civil licence to, to fly this device I was going to make. And I was in the Ministry of Aviation, as it then was, going through the corridors to get myself a civil licence again. And a man came up from one of the offices, who I immediately recognised, Michael Vivian, who was a Rolls-Royce car enthusiast, because we'd met. Because I was a, a Rolls-Royce special maker, you know, I'd make new bodies on old chassis. You'll see down the pictures here. And he said, what are you doing here, Ken? I said, well, I want to get a civil license. He said, well, you're in the R if you don't need that. I said, I want to make an auto gyro thing. Oh, he said, my God, come into my office. He was, <laughs> he was a destined for it on flight safety. <laughs> <laughs> and now I knew him well as I got to be. I knew he'd been in the Air Force, and he had also had the rather awful experience of having a crash at Holtzman Street Place in a Blenheim early in the war, and waking up on the morgue slab. But anyway, so he took me into his office, and he phoned up his opposite number, that was the Paul Witcher at the Air Registration Board. The Air Registration Board were the airworthiness side. He was on the, the air crew, the, the flight crew licensing side. And he said, I've got Ken Wallace with me. He said, I can vouch for him as an engineer and as a pilot. He said, he wants to make one of these gyro things. He said, if we don't get all obstructive, he will let us know what he finds out. And a yes. wonderful arrangement was set up. I mean, had it not been for that little bit of luck, yeah. Yeah. I'd have been absolutely banned from doing anything. <laughs> and I, I was thrilled to make my first experiment fly. I always said if it works, it's going to be a stepping stone to something practical because there were lots of things I didn't like to look up about mm -hmm. it. But I said, if it works, then I'm go it's going to lead to a practical aircraft. Mm -hmm. And that's just how it, how it happened. And actually, I did my first flights at Shore and by Sea, mm -hmm. where the Miles brothers, the Miles factory, <coughs> they were based there then. They designed very good aircraft before the war and during the war. And the moment you stepped in a Miles aircraft, you knew the man who designed it had also got in and flown it. <laughs> the things yes. came to hand. And they had said to me, do you realise that thing you're messing about with could have a military role if it was done to proper standards? And the moment they said that, I could see the point, because the Army Air Corps at the time were testing an inflatable wing aeroplane. Wow, the Durex so. Delta is the Army. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was more than about four knots of wind, it was useless. Yes. <laughs> Depending how you look at it. So the light-hearted days are, uh, no, the light days are over. Uh, it is sad though about the European thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, when you mean all these stupid yeah. regulations? Yeah. I've forgotten common sense and experience they keep saying, haven't they? Break on. <laughs> 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 have a couple of games of Congress. That was fascinating. I, I love it. Lovely colour, aren't they? Yeah. Don't say they'll pop guns through stuff. Do you remember? Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. That and no band, of course. Yeah, that's something else, yeah. Yeah, we're wigs. I love you. Look at one now, eh? I don't use one. Now, this is the one that's obviously a good bet to demonstrate because uh, you can see everything. That yeah. is the device that, that engages the, the spin-up drive. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, it won't oh, go yeah. at the moment because the gears are not in the right place. Now, the gearbox is now engaging, and as you come up, the friction See. wheel, the friction mm. wheel is just coming into engagement there, and then it stays up there, you see. Mm -hmm. Wheel brakes here are on. Uh, as you start the rotor blade turning, you take this out of the, the forward lock. <coughs> And they, that prevents the rotor blade against any air that's blowing. Mm -hmm. You've got the rotor blade break off by then. And as you open the throttle, she's gradually wanting to move forward against the brakes. Mm -hmm. and you get to a stage where she's almost sliding forward, off of the brakes, and continue to open the throttle. What's that? It disengages. Mm, neat. neat. And uh, there are trimmers here for hand for uh, hands off flight. Together they move it in, in sort of pitch attitude, but differentially it's adjustable for roll. So you can set it for whatever you're doing. So when you're taking your photographs, and then take your hands off. Yeah. And then feet off. <laughs> <laughs> and then leave it all together. <laughs> now you'll see I'll be uh, flying it both legs over one side and taking pictures of it. <laughs> Rodeo style. Side saddle. Yeah. Who's entertaining who here? <laughs> take a car up if you want to the. Yeah. Field to be comfortable. What's the best? Sorry? Where's the best track to drive down here or back? No. Just Get, tell us how. Tell us where. Just go on the field and under grass. Yeah, but where where's the field from the hole, then, Ken? Sorry. Where's the field from the hole? Just straight just ahead. Oh, well, oh, I see. Yeah, under just road. through the tree. Oh, straight ahead over the road. Straight ahead over the road. You could have a ride out. Okay. Yeah. Where's the? Should we go? Yeah. Yeah. You're getting position. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. On the long grass, not not where I'm taxiing. Okay. 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 Oh yeah, little fight. Yeah, under the roof. Yeah. When I start this up, it makes a terrible noise. Mm -hmm. I keep well clear, obviously. And it's going to be this side than that. Because if it's We stick our fingers in their ears. Don't do it by hand. <laughs> Good Jesus. God. Health and safety. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this guy's 84.
right to climb <laughs> no, no, uh, no downwash to damage a crop or anything like that. Uh, and you can concentrate on looking at the ground. You haven't got to worry about the rotor losing revs. Or, and if the engine stops, the rotor still keeps turning. Yeah. You'll come down, but you, it, you know... It's a, it's a soft landing. You're in the emergency state. The helicopter's got to adopt in a great hurry if it has an engine or give off failure. You fly all the time in that thing. Yeah. No downwash. You couldn't have anything much more practical, would you? <laughs> what other aircraft can you go through the trees? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <green. laughs> That's what we've just Absolutely brilliant. You can see how stable it is. I mean, I, I was taking those photographs of you. I wasn't, wasn't flying it with my knees or anything. You can see that because yeah. both legs are over one side. It's a, you know, horses for courses. Has anyone asked about range, le uh, flying distance? Ken, you said, you said, uh, did you set a full tack before you, you told me uh, that? It, uh, it, the it longest didn't... distance I've flown today, if you take the air, the wind into account, yeah. which was measured every half hour at RAF Marham at 500 feet. You know, they're very accurate about it. 13.9 yeah, yeah. knots prevailed while I did the 10 laps of a 100 kilometre course. That meant I flew 740 miles without landing oh, that's at right, yeah. 97 miles yeah. an hour. Which is effectively up and down the country twice. Up, 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 up coming back again. Yeah, that's right, yeah, I, I yeah, reckon yeah. I got one that would look, do the length of Britain and back, I think, if it yeah. came to it. No now, a lot of people feet. say, oh, you, yeah, it's all right, but you can only just go around the airfield with it, can't you? Well, the answer Do people really yeah, say I mean, I landed with a fair bit of fuel after flying seven hours, 50 minutes. I think